What's up guys, David here with you bringing you another video on the dishwasher. Uh, this is going to be the second uh, part uh, for this series on the dishwasher. Um, if you want to know about the first part of the dishwasher, I'll have that in the description below. Also, you can find that in the comments. I will have that in a playlist. I do have playlists for um, different videos of the appliance repair business. Be sure to check that out. <coughs> So, um, the components on a dishwasher, let's say if you got a leaky dishwasher, okay? There's a lot of different things that can play an effect with a leaky dishwasher. And one of the trickiest things about these would be the spray arm on these dishwashers. And that goes for pretty much uh, any dishwasher with spray arms. What happens is, these holes can get clogged, um, which will cause different parts of the spray arm to spray more water. And therefore, if, if the dishwasher is not spraying correctly, it can cause a leak around the seals, around the door, different areas like that. So a good thing to keep in mind is about these spray arms, check for cracks. Um, you know, a lot of times they'll get burned by the heating element. Uh, especially the one down on the bottom. So um, you, you want to keep a check on the spray arms and making sure that they're spinning uh, too. Um, so, but let's go back to leaks. Um, these racks here are um, very important, especially the top rack, because if it's not level, if, say if one of these break, if one of these arms break, or the rails break, or say if the dishwasher is not leaning back properly, um, it can cause it to, to leak around these door seals and around this door. Um, the spray arm that's down here on the bottom, and you can remove this. So now, let's talk about the bottom spray arm. This one is definitely an interesting one. It has different gears it runs off of, as you can see. And you want to check and make sure that that's functioning properly and that it's spinning properly. And the only really way that you can check, make sure if it's spinning properly, uh, is like I'll, I'll make note where it's at. I'll run it for a little bit, open up the door and see if it's moved. Um, that's really the only way that you can check it, but um, you got other components here that can cause uh, a leak, especially on this unit here, how it's got the seal down here in the bottom. This actually comes as one whole assembly, uh, especially if you got to order the circulation pump on this particular unit, you cannot just get the uh, circulation pump. Um, I'll show you guys here in a minute when we flip this over. But this seal here um, can leak um, and can break, and you'll have to replace that. That's a few far in between, but they will leak. The next thing you want to check is you got your heating element that's right here. And this heating element, which we'll turn it over here in a minute, um, it, it's got two holes that's right here and right over there. And they got a seal, and they'll leak, and that nut... Uh, sometimes a back off or break around it, and that'll cause a leak. Um, you got your door seal that's right here. So your door seal it goes all the way around here, and it's easy to remove. You just pull it, you know, you can remove it. It just tucks in there. With a, got a little lip there, which you can tuck in. And you can check those, make sure there's no cracks, they'll tear, different things like that. Um, and this right here is your soap uh, dispenser box, and it also has a seal that goes around it. Um, and it's a few far in between. I, I rarely change those because they're leaking around there, but I have changed them. Uh, I mostly change these because the solenoid goes bad and it can't, you know, it's not dispensing the soap out. 
this one's not dispensing the soap out because the control board it's got some kind of issue um now if it's not spraying right it can spray weird and it can leak around this thing here but a few i, I rarely see that but mostly your leaks are going to be around your door seals um you're going to have an issue because of the spray arm that's cracked or not spraying properly you also got the seal that goes around this one on this particular one um you know spray arms can get clogged up different things like that you got the seal around here you also do have another seal behind this door but i just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about just you know uh, making sure these racks are level making sure um you know everything's spinning properly spray arms are spinning properly there's no they don't get clogged up you can get little pits to uh, get in here and pick some food out and stuff like that uh, out of those spray arms you know you can take this one apart here and eyeball it you know like it's you know and, and check and make sure everything's good make sure it don't have no cracks nothing like that um, and also you want to make sure that your um, little water canal that's here that brings water up into this upper spray uh up into the excuse me into the upper spray arm you want to check and make sure that that's in good shape too no cracks there but um i just kind of want to go over some of the basics some of the little tricky things that are kind of tricky get this on here All right, so let's talk a little bit about the door and removing, you know, these door panels off these dishwashers. Some of them vary. Some of them are different. Yeah, you got this thing in. Some of them are different, <laughs> and uh, sometimes you'll have Phillips head screws right here along the edges and sometimes you'll have I think normally they're like a, um, T25 I think let's see or T20 I think these are a T20 they may be a little smaller uh, it's the T15 that's right we use the T15 on these this one there we go t15 star bit want to remove these screws here and normally I like to set up under this to kind of help my feet around my feet to help you know catch it and support it that's a good little note all right so now that we got the screws out of this this uh front panel can come free appears we have a little harness right here take that out the way that's the front uh, display board. And we give this thing a little lift here. Like so. And then remove the front panel. Uh, just say if this dishwasher is in a, you know, this one's installed and you don't want to install it but you want to check like the drain pump make sure it's getting power you want to check and make sure circulation pumps get power um you can check continuity on the heating element you can all do it right here on the board and just say if this thing don't have a, a schematic in the bottom of it you can always look up under there remove that bottom kick panel 
look up under there and see what wires are going into your pump. Look what color they are. They're all colored right here, so you can, you know, always uh, look and trace down wires. Um, but this is your control board, and um, I'll show you here in a minute how I'll go through and diagnose. Um, it from the control board so so here's the control board here this is held on by a little clip and they got grooves and you can pull the slide it to the left and pull it out I'm just going to use this to undo that there just like that and here's the control board okay so, okay, you turn the unit on and you, um, the drain's not coming on. It's not draining. Uh, there's water still in the unit. Customers complaining that it's not draining. And, um, usually the drain pumps are pretty easy to assess under here, but let's just say you want to check it from the control board. Well, what you want to do is, is you want to get under here and say if you ain't got a schematic, you want to figure out what color wire is going to be your drain pump. Or say, for instance, your circulation pump. Or, you know, it's, it's the dishwasher is filling. Uh, it, it drains, it fills, but it's not uh, rinsing. It's not putting pressure. The circulation pump's not kicking on. Well, you can locate these wires, and that's what we're about to do here. I'll remove this kick panel off this dishwasher and I would go under here if I didn't have my schematic and I would locate these wires under here okay and I'm doing it from this perspective because the dishwasher is going to be laying down okay and you know you gonna to have to pull it out sometimes sometimes you don't but on this particular one, I'd say, okay, this is my drain pump right here. You know, like I said, this drain pump is easy to get to. You can pull the pull the tab out right here and check power to it. And what you do is you want to leave the unit, you know, like this, because you're going to have to shut that door in order for it to power on. And you will have to still have the, you know, this component plugged into it you know you could come back here and plug this you know plug this unit back in so that you can control the dishwasher because what you're going to do is is you're going to say okay um i know that this one is the circulation pump and i know this one is the drain pump how I know that? Well, I've looked at this one so many times, I know that this is the circulation pump, but I'd get under there and I identify that color that's running to that particular um, drain pump or circulation pump. I want to know which ones are my heating element. Like I can go right up under here and identify right there that that's a blue and white wire run into my heating element right here this is my heating element right here and remember what i was telling you where it could leak well it could leak around this uh plastic uh lock nut here and that'll cause it to leak too and it'll leak around there but if i want to you know and look here here is my circulation pump on this particular unit remember i was telling you guys that you can't just buy the circulation pump for this unit. You have to get this whole darn assembly under here. But because it has this particular motor on it. Um, if you, you know, I've tried to look up the numbers on it. You just can't get it that way. But anyways, so here's my blue wires. I know that these are my two power wires. And I can check and make sure I got proper voltage coming to this from the control board. And like I've told you guys... I now know that what these wires are running to. Okay, so I want to find my blue and white wire, which is going to be this one right here. 
and it's going to be the um, this one, and this one is going to be the ones that's running to my heating element. So let me show you guys. We'll check it and see if it's got continuity. Watch this. So let's check it for continuity. Get my meter out here. I'm turn it on. Continuity there. They call it the little horseshoe. As you can see. And then on this particular unit, I'm going to go one, two. And I'm always test my meter and make sure that it's doing good by touching these two leads here. Okay, so we're good. So let's check continuity on my heating element. one lead there as you can see and you know there's no power on one lead here so I know that my heating element is good because I got continuity because I'm touching these two leads there and that means that that's a closed circuit that means that heating elements good so now we're going to make sure that we close the dishwasher. You know, we're going to have the control panel still plugged into this, you know. And say, I'm going to press start. And normally when a dishwasher starts, the drain pump will kick on. So, I know that these two blue wires, because I looked at them, is my drain pump. So, what I'll do is... So I'll pull this lead out like this, and I'll go in here, and I'll touch the little two, the, these, you know, look where the wires plug in at, okay, right there, so those two, so I'm going to go right here, and I'm going to go right here. You know, and I'm going to turn my meter now on voltage. AC, because this is not DC, this is going to be AC. And <clears throat> I'm going to hold this control board with my leads right there. And I'm going to go on the control panel and hit start. And I'm going to see if I got 120 coming right here. If I got 120 coming right here, my drain pump's not coming on. I know that drain's bad. And that works the same for the circulation pump. Okay. Now, say if I wasn't getting power coming out of this part of the control board, then I would know that this control board's bad. Works the same for the circulation pump over here. Okay. If I got power coming out of this uh, lead here, you know, I would pull this out like so, and I would put my leads on those two tabs there. I would hit start on the dishwasher, and I would see if I had 120 coming out right here. If I didn't have 120 coming out, no, there's a problem with the board. If I had 120 coming out, then I know there is an issue with the circulation pump. And, you know, it is always good to check to make sure that you do got proper voltage coming at the other end of it. <clears throat> so, but a lot of times that's what's going on is the pumps burn up or the control boards went out. And like I said, you could check everything right here. Um, you know, a lot of times if your heating element's got continuity... And there's a little thermostat that's up under there. We're going to go into another video on that. But um, we would make sure that the, the thermostat had continuity. If that thermostat had continuity, heating element had continuity, and the customer was saying that the dishes is not uh, drying, like the heating element's not coming on, then we know that 9 times out of 10, we've got an issue right here at this board. But we can always go right here and check power to it. Um, a lot of times, um, you know, you could go to a quick cycle and make sure you got power. You have to wait a little bit, but it's always a good way to have a for sure diagnosis. So, you can always check stuff right here at the board. Um, also, um, you know, and like I said, you, you don't have a schematic. You can always 
Just look, trace the wires down. They're 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 the same up here. Um. So yeah, that's that one. Okay, so now we got the dishwasher laid on its back. Um, this is when you got to do a repair. Uh, if you you know if you can't get to the drain pump without having to pull it out, sometimes you can do that. But a lot of times when you got to put on a circulation pump or drain pump, you have to lay it down, pull it out, have to install it, pull it out. If it's got a copper line, which I really dread, uh, I'll undo it right here. Um, Sometimes I'll undo it from the up under the sink, but majority of the time a copper line, I'll undo it right here because I just hate feeding that line in and out through that hole there. Um, but so anyways, um, this component right here is going to be your pressure switch. And it's just got a little uh, micro switch in there that that float that's inside there once it reaches a level it'll close that circuit the pressure switch and it'll stop filling um you can all you can always check those little micro switches in there it's like the little micro switches that come in a microwave you can always check continuity on them by lifting up that float and putting your leads on this brown rye right here to make sure you got continuity Okay, so your next component, remember when I was telling you guys about the uh, the thermostat? Uh, this is going to be your thermostat right here, okay? And um, it's going to run uh, into your control board. Remember, these are the two wires that we check for the um, heating element, okay? But also, if you've got no heat, these are, I rarely change these on a dishwasher, but this can cause a no heat. Um, and so that's your thermostat there. Your next component is your water valve. Uh, and always, like I explained in the last clip, um, you could check and make sure that, you know, a lot of times you ain't got to lay, you can check this and don't have to pull it out. But you can always go right here and make sure that you got 120 coming to your water valve. You know, you can you can uh, get your leads and uh, make sure that you got your meter on voltage. And go right here and we will turn the unit on. Of course, with it not laying down, but I'd be checking it as if I was if it was installed. And I would make sure that I had proper voltage coming into that. If I had proper voltage coming into the water valve, but yet it was not filling, I would make sure that I had water coming to the water line. And if I knew that that was an issue, I would change the water valve. Okay, so um, the next component that you have, of course, is your drain pump here. Uh, there were the two blue wires running into it. Um, these drain pumps are very easy to change on this particular model. A majority of them are like this. And the way that you change this thing is simply with a twist. And let's see here. Make sure we got another clip. You just twist it like that. And it comes right off like so. And, you know, always make sure you got your ring around here. Um, they can leak around this ring. Um, that could be another leak issue, but that's for you far in between. You know, and like I said, make sure you got your teeth and your grooves there. And boom, that thing's back on. That's how you change the drain pump. Simple, easy money. Uh, like I explained to you on this unit, this is your circulation pump. Uh, I had to change this whole assembly, you know, had to pull the drain off. Um, and the other components, this is a, a, a sensor here, um, but, um, you would have to remove these clips here on this pump to actually pull this pump out. But I, I just kind of wanted to go over, you know, on all dishwashers, you're going to have these same kind of components like this. Uh, sometimes you won't have a control board, you'll have a timer, um, you know, and so uh, these things are simple. Uh, sometimes stuff will get clogged up into these drain lines here. 
Um, you know, and it's it's important to make sure that that drain line's hooked up properly, especially if it's hooked up to a trash compactor, just to the fact that it ha has to be up higher and it has to have a loop in it because of the backwashing this and these drains that get clogged up. You had to go in here and pull this joker out, suck the water out, and then, and then go and find a water hose and blow this drain out. I've had to do that. Um, and so, you know, your, your power box is always right here. Uh, sometimes you may find wire nuts that's burn up in here. Uh, always check and make sure you got proper voltage coming to your dishwasher. It runs off of 120. Um, you know, and this dishwasher, they'll give you codes. Um, you know, we may go over another video on that, but I just kind of wanted to go over the basics on these dishwashers. They can be troubling sometimes, especially when they have a leak. That's the most aggravatingest part on them is a leaky dishwasher. But uh, this is David. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up. That helps my uh, view count. That makes YouTube show my videos more. That's a way that you can support me. Um, also, leave me a comment. Ask any kind of question. And if this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to my channel. And always check out my playlist on my channel. I have it different playlists for different parts of the business. Uh, I have training videos, business side of it, flipping appliances, parts, all the other good stuff. But this is David with DC Appliance Repair, and I appreciate you guys, and I'll see you in the next video.